Hey, Foot Clan, we look forward to this episode all off season. Our top 10 tips and tricks to win your league on today's show. Make sure you like, subscribe, and enjoy the episode. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Manscaped. Manscaped has just taken off not only in the US of A, but Canada, the UK, across Europe, Australia, South Africa, Singapore. Join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped for all of their grooming needs. Manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS. Get 20% off free shipping with the code FOOTBALLERS at Manscaped.com. And Foot Clan, you know what? You want football, not just a game or two. You want all of them, and you want them live. Oh, you can't get DirecTV where you live? No problem. Stream the 2021 NFL Sunday ticket on your favorite devices. No satellite required. It's like having front row seats to every live out-of-market game every Sunday. They have uh, the 30-minute replays on their NFL Sunday ticket app. You can follow up to 20 of your favorite players. Go online to NFLSundayTicket.tv slash Sunday ready now to see if you're eligible. Pro tip, use promo code BALLERS2021 at checkout to save 15%. Again, to see if you're eligible for the NFL Sunday ticket streaming package, go to NFLSundayTicket.tv slash Sunday ready and use the code BALLERS2021 to save 15% when you sign up. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, August 18th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Right. I'm Andy Holloway. Excited to be with you for today's episode. Oh, yes, we are. It's a very special episode. Yes, the top 10 tips and tricks to win your league mm -hmm. on today's show. We have some buy-sell. We have NFL news to talk about. We have words to mispronounce. It's... Oh, I already nailed that one, fellas. It's going <laughs> to of the show. be outstanding. We also have a very special giveaway. This will be uh, happening tomorrow night. We're giving away the ultimate draft kit for life. For life. And a DK Metcalf signed jersey. All you have to do to take part in that fine giveaway is... Pick up your 2021 UDK at ultimatedraftkit.com by 7.30 p.m. Eastern because that is the deadline. That's when the countdown hits zero and we announce the winner of the UDK for life. Check that out, yeah, ultimatedraftkit.com. So if you've already gotten your Ultimate Draft Kit, good job. Be there on the live stream while we announce. and You might win. Oh, man. That's a good price. On top of that, it'll be a live stream. It's going to be full of hijinks, delights, fantasy <laughs> tips. Okay. Yeah. All sorts Sounds of good. fun stuff. I mean, for a second there, I thought there was, there was going to be a spread. Like, we're going to get some food. Well, we're going to have food. Oh, man. Some delights. Are we having food at the live Turkish stream? delights. Turkish delights. That's where I was going, I All guess. All right. Weird. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. What is a Turkish delight? I am Googling right now. You said it. I'm like, <laughs> my what wife, is a Turkish delight? My wife bought them for our kids recently. Wait, they're, they're a real thing? They're not just They're not just not from just Narnia. Narnia. They're not just from Narnia. No. I mean, I, they, they, they look like little... Chewy gummies with like powdered sugar on them. Uh, yeah, they're confections based on a gel of starch and sugar. Yeah, from Turkey. Uh, they have to be from Turkey, obviously. They better be. They're actually from Norway. I N guess they could have been from the animal Nordic. Oh, are they made out of turkey? <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Like, it's like a protein snack. Uh, it's one of the treats from Thanksgiving. A, a protein still jelly. Yeah. That sounds <laughs> oh, gross. Turkey jelly. <laughs> oh, I'm in. <laughs> Probably <laughs> turkey jelly. <laughs> <laughs> Probably time to get into buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction. This is the confection deep dive episode. That's right. We're going to give you all the <laughs> tips on how to make a good uh, PB and T. So enjoy your <laughs> peanut butter and turkey. <laughs> 
I'd eat that. All right, Cardinals running back Chase Edmonds. Buy or sell 1,100 total yards in 2021. Uh, for all of the, I guess, jokes or criticism that you might receive, you you two, Kyler Murray, number one ranked mm -hmm. quarterback uh, rankers, Edmonds has probably gotten – I mean, we've had him lower than everybody else for the majority of the summer. 1,100 total yards. Last year he had 850 yards on 164 opportunities. Uh, it's, what do we think about Chase Edmonds? I think the line is very fair. This is not someone that is going to be, you know, a ground-and-pound type of running back who's going to get 225 carries. I mean, last year in 16 games he didn't even get 100 carries. But I do expect that to go well north. This is just a matter of when you're when you're adding in his work in the passing game, which is very very good to the rushing totals. I I mean you're going to be right around that spot. If I look at my stats, I am barely over 1,100 yards with 445 uh, receiving yards and 700 rushing yards. So while I I him and haw about this line, whether I would take the over or under, I think that the real tiebreaker here is that my projections are including pretty much a full season of James Conner. And that's not a bet I'd take to Vegas. Sure. So um, I think there is opportunity for Chase Edmonds to go north of where I have him ranked should he well, find that more of the backfield to himself. And if it helps, he was at 53 yards a game on average last year. He would need to be at 64 a game to hit this mark. So you're saying, hey, the departure of Kenyon Drake, another year of the offense kind of building itself through and around Chase Edmonds, can he go up 11 yards a game per average? To which I would I would buy that. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's just too talented in the passing game to not hit that number. The the one downside that I see that I'm starting to question is the utilization of Rondale Moore. Uh, the more okay. short screen game that he is involved in, the more, more. The more jet sweeps, the more more gets involved. Um, that could come. I I feel like the the player that's going to take the expense of the most is is Chase Edmonds. I have similar to you, Jason. I have Chase Edmonds. <laughs> what, sorry, I just tackles? no. Sorry, I just looked at my projections. I'm, you, I have him at eleven oh nine. Yeah, I I so have him just it's close. I have him just north of eleven hundred yards, and yeah, that I mean that is factoring a full season from James Conner, but. That's also factoring in a full season of Chase Edmonds, which, I mean, he, he if he's going to get a bunch of more work, then, I mean, he has a probability of missing a game or two. But I'm, I'm going to buy it. I will, I will buy that mark for Chase. All right, just that, barely, just barely. That was buy or sell. Brought to you by Pristine Auction. Use the code Ballers at pristineauction.com to get a ten dollar credit towards some sports memorabilia. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. There was some anxiety and uh, heartburn in the studio yesterday when, oh brother, when news of Chase Claypool, a favorite of Mike's, went down, was uh, helped off the field by Big Ben, and uh, I don't remember who the other guy was. Ebron. Ebron. What's the news on Chase Claypool's practice injury? So it's – man, when that news came out and the photo uh, came out of, of Claypool being helped off the field, that's n not normally what you see. I mean, you, you hear, oh, well, the, the cart came out, which the cart comes out frequently for uh, training camp, you know, just to get these guys off the field. But it's just – it felt ominous that his quarterback is walking him off the field as they're saying, oh, he went down, we don't know what happened. Uh, but thankfully, it sounds like it's just a minor ankle sprain, so he'll probably take the the next couple weeks off. But as of right now, week one is still in the cards. All right, we have some other injury news we need to get out there. Pete Carroll said Tyler Lockett has missed recent practices due to a groin injury. Ah, groin. The team's going to take it careful with him. So an injury for Lockett that's limiting him, probably not a reason to be concerned quite yet. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's certainly upsetting news in the sense that, well, all three of us were, were really high on Tyler Lockett. Uh, I think we view him as a screaming value this year. And you don't. Ah! <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, with the groin injury, he's a real screamer. Um, you know, th this isn't what you want to see, but, uh, you know, 
Uh, last year, David Montgomery had that groin injury. Um, and his was an extreme one. His was far His was a worse. major groin, and you yeah. don't want a major groin injury. No. That's right. And then uh, he was fine and was the running back four. Especially in the Army. You don't want to run into major groin. No, he's a son of a gun. Um, Traquan Smith returned to practice on Tuesday. It's good news for the fledgling yeah. wide receiver room in New Orleans. Uh, Cam Newton said that Bill Belichick hasn't told him if he'll start the regular season opener. Or has he? I just – it's going to be – Interesting to watch the next two preseason games because, or maybe the next one. I don't know if Mac ends up being slotted in as a starter. He probably won't play in the third one, but I thought he looked much better than Cam Newton. I think he offers the offense um, something that Cam doesn't. So I I think Mac's going to start. I mean, I'll go out on a limb right now, and I think Mac's going to start it week one. Week one. I wow. do not think he starts week one, but I saw enough from Cam this last week in the last years to say he'll, he'll start early. I, I agree with the premise of what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all factored in a, a certain amount of cam games. I don't think we, any of us projected cam for a full season. Did we? No. Uh, all right. What else? Amari Cooper attends, intends to play in Saturday's preseason game. He says, quote, I feel like I am when asked whether he's a hundred percent, which is really, I mean, that is the answer to the question. Yeah. Can anyone else make that decision for you? Whether he's 100%? You, you no. Don't, you don't actually have like a meter that you can look at. Like, well, it looked like I, I feel 100%. Let me check but it my watch. At, it says I'm at 87. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the reality is if he is 100%, he would play in the preseason game. And he wants to play in the preseason game. That's going to be um, a really great indicator of health. And I will, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to draft. If he plays in the preseason, I'm happy to draft him. Robbie Anderson dealing with a hamstring injury as well, so prepare yourself for Terrace Marshall highlights from training camp. Sure. I uh, I expect him to run routes and catch passes in practice. Right, yeah. I, I've seen a lot of these rookies um, able to catch uh, the, the footballs in team drills. Yeah, Very once you, impressive stuff. Once you've uh, you know overcome the obstacles of making the National Football League, that's good to be catching passes as a wide receiver. To be fair, that Jalen Rager catch was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that one was that was. Pretty I get cool. it. That was it was over a uh, scrub DB who's probably not going to make the NFL, but that one handed snatch was amazing. It just makes me wish that when we were playing flag football together, we had recorded more of our practices because the yes. hype could have built. It really could have. Yeah. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the f the largest dynasty platform out there. Make sure you switch your league to Sleeper. They're doing a lot of stuff this year to uh, get new people on board, upgrading all the time, so check them out. Guys, I think the time has arrived. Oh, oh I'm so excited. Top 10. Let's do it. Tips and tricks. Top 10 tips and tricks on today's episode. This, I believe, is our seventh time doing this episode. That's a lot of tips and a lot of tricks. We always try to bring something new to the equation. Um, sometimes it's things we've recently learned. Sometimes it's deep dives into stats and analytics that we've you know, spent the summer looking at and something jumped out. But we're counting it down 10 to 1, and Jason's going to kick it off. Number 10. Calling this one sophomore slump or sophomore bump, you decide. <laughs> Look, there's a lot of data behind what I'm about to say. We, we on this team, we have a PhD in data science from Harvard. To be clear, that's not any of us. That is not, that is not no, we're not nearly that smart. Uh, shout out to Matt DeSorbo. We have the man, the myth, the legend, the Borgogan himself compiling it all together. And tomorrow, all this data, we are going to be releasing an article at the fantasyfootballers.com with all of that. Did but you for really now. really just try and take, <laughs> like, sneak credit that we, you're like, we have a PhD. Well, I organized this research together uh -huh. and asked for what to do. So I'm, I'm definitely taking part of the credit here. And okay. I would say when he gets the Bro PhD. Brooks is openly <laughs> laughing. When, when he gets the PhD. <laughs> from behind the screen right now. Are you seriously saying that I don't participate in that doctorate? Like that I don't, I can't be called doctor when he graduates? You could be called like doe. I accept. <laughs> 
but wait, there's is a that D-H-A. Oh yeah. no, that's the spelling is a problem. Okay, well, Doctor Doe, you're a baker <laughs> and he's a doctor. Doctor Doe over here um, it will be releasing uh, an article. I I really hope everyone goes and reads it. There's a ton of data, but here's the too long, didn't read synopsis. We all are trying to find the next big fantasy star. The glory is in calling your shot before they break out. And in the past, it's always been, uh, you know, the year three wide receiver. That's when you wait. And that's when, you know, the, the studs happen. But behind the scenes, the work looking at second year players and when they break out for fantasy has led us to really incredible conclusions. True shortcuts for fantasy football, a genuine edge in your drafts. We looked at every single rookie wide receiver over the last decade, 574 of them. And then their sophomore wide receiver ADP heading into year two. The hit rate of these players is staggering. Of all the wide receivers with an ADP rounds four through eight, and ADP matters here. This is what the entire fantasy community is thinking about, guys. What rounds? Rounds four through eight. So all if, you, second, if they're being drafted between the fourth and the eighth mm -hmm. round. And then their second-year wide receiver – Every single one of them beat their rookie fantasy points per game. All of them. Now, maybe that's not good enough because they could get better than their rookie season and still not uh, be great. 13 of the 18, 72% beat their ADP, meaning if they were drafted as wide receiver 16, they were better than that. If they were drafted as wide receiver 20, they were better than that. Three of them were injured. Ridley Cup and Martavis Bryant. So factoring in, okay, we lost them due to injury. Those players were great. That's an 86% hit rate of outperforming your ADP. And the only two whiffs were Corey Davis, mm. who was a major disappointment, and yeah. Hollywood Brown, a, a major disappointment to me. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I love the dude. Uh, but, you know, the last six weeks of last year, he was the wide receiver 11. So he's not a bum. Uh, it just didn't work out in that offense. But here are examples so that you can But well, what if I draft these guys? What could I get? 2015, you remember Allen Robinson's monster 1,400-yard season? Sure do. Yeah, he was a second-year wide receiver. Tyreek Hill finishing as wide receiver four in his second year. Uh, in 2018, Juju went absolutely bananas. Um, you had Calvin Ridley and DJ Moore two years ago. Last year, A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf. When these players are in those rounds in the second year, they hit. Right. So, uh, in, and by the time they come to year three, the discount, the value, it's gone. They're just up in rounds two and three. So this year, C.D. Lamb, Brandon Ayuk, T. Higgins, Chase Claypool, Jerry Judy, LaVisca Chenault. These are players. Are they all going in rounds four through eight? Though? I believe ADP-wise they are in rounds four through Visca, eight. Chenault Visca's probably isn't. In. He is, Chenault probably is not. He, he might. I mean, it depends on the platform you're in, but he's just been rising more and more. He's obviously at the at the back end of that. And, and really, truly, when we looked at the data, this goes before the fourth round and a little bit after the eighth round as well as far as uh, hit rate. We just wanted to make sure, obviously, if you're being drafted in the second round as the wide receiver six, you pretty much have nowhere to go but down. And if you're dr being drafted in the double-digit rounds, then that's just a shot in the dark. So take a look at second-year players. This data also applies pretty significantly to running backs as well. Uh, tight ends are still year three. Draft them with confidence. Second year, rounds four through eight. Yes, sir. All right. So, Ayuk, Higgins, Claypool, Judy. And I'm looking it up right now. In PPR on Sleeper, Visca is just sneaking in. Okay. In, P in full PPR. I could see so. that. All right, Mike. Uh, you're up. Number nine. So, this is a specifically a in-your-draft-based tip. And I'm calling this one... Pull the weeds. All right. And so, number one, you got to move away from the top 200 list. You got to move into a tier based drafting uh, system. That's what we have always talked about on this show. That's what uh, I had moved to before the podcast and had tremendous success. And if you're, like, we know we're getting some of the, the casual players in here. So we'll just quickly go over a tier based system. That is when you have players ranked kind of think about like a bucket and that's because they are projected very similar similarly yes. <laughs> there we go similar mispronouncing words similar. we got it in there uh it almost like these players are a bit replaceable with each other they're gonna you know score right around the same range and that helps you not freak out 
and and just look at a oh well this player is ranked 25 and this player is ranked 63 in in reality for their position they might actually be very very close and this helps you know when I need to draft a wide receiver because the bucket is almost empty uh, and I know that the running back tier over here this tier four it's still full of of guys so I can just leave that alone but before uh before doing the podcast how I, how I would organize my players in tiers I would find my trusted source. I hope for you that is the fantasy footballers. You picked up your ultimate draft kit. We already have tiers available for you. But part of the of the UDK is you can download, grab a CSV of our tiers, and then go in there and make your own adjustments. Like this is your team. Don't let us try and finger wag and boss you around. And I would go in and I would legit just delete players. I would look at, at someone else's uh, tiers and I'd go, I know for sure I'm not going to draft that player. And I would weed out these guys who weren't even targets of mine. And it made it, it helped me to not be overwhelmed when I'm inside of the draft. I'm not all of a sudden, when you're on the clock, feeling the, 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 that tug of that string of, well, they said they, this. They said they've got this guy ranked so high, so I got it. No. Weed them out. Have your tiers ready to go, and players that you're not interested in drafting, your you your process, your decision making has said no. I disagree with the analysis of, and the ranking of this player. Just get them out of there. Not my don't, guy. Not my problem. Don't even worry about it. It will help. I'm telling you, your draft plan and your prep, you will f you will feel so much more prepared if you go in and and have those guys out of there and just ready to go. And we always talk about yes, everyone has. Uh, uh, everyone is is valuable at the right ADP, but I'm telling you, when I just don't even work, when I have, when I've not worried about that, I've not been overwhelmed by the amount sheer amount of players I can draft, and I just have the players that I'm targeting in my tiers. I dominate my drafts. That's good advice. Pull the weeds. Yes. Moving on. Number eight. All right. My tip right here, we're calling it uh, age is but a number. Something I'm telling myself as the birthdays continue right. to rise. This is really advice specific to dynasty and keeper leagues related to the overemphasis of age. Because I believe that if you overemphasize age, you have the potential to submarine championship seasons. We've been parts of dynasty leagues for 10 plus years we have seen the types of rosters constructed in the preseason that look like they should be printed and framed and hung on a wall, chiseled into Hall of Fame plaques, and then they fall apart due to sometimes the potential of a roster overloaded with young players not being reached. Juggernaut-looking teams becoming have-nots when players don't mature. So here's the headline, and then I'll give you some numbers behind it. Oftentimes, I believe it is more likely that an established player that has that can provide you additional years of proven value is better than the unproven potential of a player when you construct your team. And let me show you a little bit of what I'm talking about. We have a really good article up on the site. Uh, Marvin uh, wrote it. It's the Dynasty Lifecycle series. Marvin! And he looked at production of players over time and i told him i said let's let's look at this data and let's see how players perform past the perceived peak age everybody constructing a dynasty league they want to build that super team that's somehow going to stand the test of time and run six seven eight years and look it just doesn't work that way the nfl is a difficult game to maintain value in and maintain peak production if you look at the peak age which we, we show this actually in the draft analyzer. We show the peak age. Uh, we give you a breakdown of your team. So let's look at the quarterback position. And there's some debate on what peak age at quarterback is. 28, 29 years old. This is probably the least important position to bring this point up. But if it's 28, 81% of top 12 quarterback seasons came from players past that peak age. If it's the running back position, 64% of top 24 running back seasons we're past the peak age of 24. 42% of top 24 wide receiver seasons 
we're past the peak age of 27. And the wide receiver position is one that we pay close attention to because we know that drop-off is coming. You still get almost half the top 24 seasons coming after the peak age. Same with the tight end position. 40% of tight end one seasons were past the age of 27. If you think about the life cycle of your dynasty league, last year I made a trade, a trade for a player that nobody you did. Nobody would ever consider trading for in a dynasty league. Tom Brady at 43 years old. I got value for Tom Brady, won the championship. And now you have seven more years of Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but even <laughs> that might be true. How much of that percentage is just Tom Brady? <laughs> well, uh, given I haven't traded for a 43 year old before. But the point is, is I'm going to get one more year out of Tom Brady. If I get a year and a half out of Tom Brady, you think about how long you've been playing in your dynasty league. Is it six years? That's a third of the time that I've had a team right. where I'm getting actual value from a player over 40. Now, I'm not saying you load up on age. That's not the advice. The advice is you will win championships by taking players that are almost always on a discount because of the perceived decline and you can win leagues that way. So age is just a number. Balance is the key. I think we've all said that before in Dynasty Leagues. Um, and and I think you construct, can construct a championship roster by considering that fact. That, is that why you love Age A. Green so much? Yeah, every year that name oh, means oh, even more. Man. Yeah. Do I, do you ha do you need I have a, no, I have no negative drops over here. Uh, we can go here. <laughs> Thank you. We can go Thank here. You. Yeah. We can go here. Number two. <laughs> uh, well, let's just ask the audience, though. Okay, yeah, they liked it. They liked it. What is this? That AM? was like AM radio yeah. right there. Whoa. Whoa. Bing, Whoa. bing, bing. bing. <laughs> uh, ooga. All right. Uh, <laughs> I hear the producers. All right, I want to hand the baton back to Jason for his number seven overall tip and trick. But first, we want to thank today's sponsor, and we're going to start with the Modern Finance Podcast. Look, the investment world has changed. We've paid a lot of attention to it here at the studio when the Bitcoin and NFT craze was going on. You've got robo-investors. Uh, these are things that a lot of people are talking about. But how do you know if anything that people are talking about is right for you? The Modern Finance Podcast helps to demystify a very confusing crypto space. It is. Uh, decentralized finance and more. It's hosted by Kevin Rose, who is listed as a top 25 angel investor by Bloomberg and one of the top 25 most influential people in on the web by Time Magazine. Uh, it is a crypto show for the novice and expert alike. And like I said, it's going to help demystify that space. Um, you know, don't let your crypto guy friend be the life of uh, the party. Yeah, the crypto bro. Yeah, get in on that. Uh, you can listen to Modern Finance feel well equipped to discuss those topics and understand the crypto and NFT landscape. Uh, the financial landscape is harder than ever to navigate, but you don't have to do it alone. So download and subscribe to Modern Finance wherever you listen to podcast podcasts. That's Modern Finance wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't be the last person on the next train out, Mike. Listen to Modern Finance and get ahead of the future of finance. Will do. Thank you for highlighting me. I was point, I was just thinking you should probably level up. We've all been. Jason's already got a PhD, so we <laughs> yeah. we really don't need to worry about him. Bookland, new FanDuel fantasy players. Your day is about to get twenty percent better. Start playing fantasy this football season, and FanDuel will give you twenty a twenty percent bonus on your first deposit up to five hundred dollars. That's a big time bonus, and all you need to do to claim it BTB is <laughs> yes is make. Your first deposit. If you haven't checked out FanDuel and and Daily Fantasy, highly recommend. It is the perfect complement to your season long leagues because you get to set a new lineup every week. You get you don't have to deal with the season long injury that that bit of a bummer in season. It it doesn't happen when you're playing DFS. They have a bunch of different game types and formats. You have the the main slate, which is all the games. You have the single game. You have best ball. Snake draft. You can even do a private contest with just your friends. So check this out. Experience season long wins without the season long waits. Sign up today at fanduel.com slash FFF to claim your bonus and start playing today. That's fanduel.com slash FFF. Age and location restrictions apply. Bonus issued as non withdrawable site credit that expires after 30 days. 
All right, back into the countdown. By the way, can you get a, a – you, you went for the doctorate by association. Is that's, that what you went with? That, that's right. That's okay. right. Back into the countdown. Number seven. Well, this one is the tilt terminator, oh. my friends. <laughs> you don't want to tilt, and we've all tilted. No, I do not. We have all tilted at a draft. Stop and, it. And what, yes, please. That's, <laughs> let that be the Stop end. Stop it right now. Uh, Stop doing what? <laughs> so – when when you start tilting at a draft, you make bad picks, you have a bad time, you don't know where you're going, and it ruins pretty much like as soon as you tilt once, it ruins the rest of your draft. But 99% of That's every... That's what the top 200 is for, by the way. That's the tilt 200. <laughs> right, yeah. When you, you don't know what you're doing, you quickly look at the top 200. 99% of every draft day tilt is the same exact reason. It's you were waiting for this guy or that guy. Oh, and they got sniped, mm -hmm. and now you don't know what to do. Now, my tip is extremely practical and very simple. It might be the most important tip that you get just because it's easy to implement. It's very simple. Always queue up one more player than the amount of picks left. When you are four or five picks away, queue up five or six picks. I don't care if you only like this guy or that guy the most from that. Like too often we go, man, I'm hoping this guy or that guy gets back to me. And oh, it looks close. It looks close. During that time while you're waiting, pick out the amount of people that you need to make up the picks between you and that spot because get a little tilt insurance it's it's a hundred percent tilt insurance it guarantees that even when you're disappointed you don't feel tilted you don't feel like you have to make up for something you don't feel like you're trying to uh, scratch and claw your way back from a mistake you did nothing wrong you didn't make a mistake it might you might not have got the guy you wanted the most but you were prepared and it's so simple to do you have the time in your draft to do it uh, most platforms have a little button to queue people up. Mm -hmm. If you're doing an offline draft, just mark or circle, you know, however many. One, once you get a couple picks away, make sure you select uh, uh, on your own personal queue, even if it's in your mind only, more than the amount of picks left. You will have a an actual better functional draft the rest of the way. Very, very simple. But I started doing this uh, pretty much only last year. And it's awesome. It's it's funny. It's one of those things that seems like, well, this is duh. This is an obvious tip and trick, but you're like, but we all, we're all guilty of of not doing this. I will say this too: if you do have that moment in your draft where that happens to you, it does seem like the the uh, science behind tilting is that it compounds. Oh, it's scientifically proven that yeah. time actually moves faster yeah, I know, once you're tilted. I know some people at Harvard that have PhDs, and they have confirmed it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Yale, actually. I know some of the Yale. So. Uh, but but you, the, the Harvard was me, though, that you were talking about? Right. I, okay. mean, I mean you, Just of course. Sure. But it does compound because when something doesn't – things are not going to go according to plan. You may listen to the show. we got a mock draft episode tomorrow. You do mock drafting to get a lay of the land, but things are not going to go according to your written plan. And that's why, you know, these tips and tricks exist. Is You know, Mike's advice about how you download the tiers and you prepare yourself. You're trying to put yourself into the position of which <laughs> the least <laughs> amount can go wrong and you're not going to be thrown off. And uh, it lets you make a clear-headed decision in future rounds. So Failure to plan is planning to fail. Oh, man. As they say at Harvard. <laughs> right. Uh, and Mike, you're up. Number six. All right. This is called Cook It By The Book because you can't be lazy, guys. No. Oh, my gosh. You know you can't be lazy. <laughs> yeah. Good there. luck getting that out of your head all day. Oh, yeah. It's a blast from the past. Break it down, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will, Jason. You cannot be lazy. Our, our uh, great friends at <laughs> Lazy Town have uh, inspired this one. And what I mean by this is you need to remain active. You must stay vigilant throughout the entire week. This is not it, Tuesday, Wednesday rolls around. I set my lineup. I set it. I forget it. I check out. And then on Sunday, I go, ooh, what's going on here? No. When it comes to your waivers, don't just add, you're like, well, maybe I'll go after this guy. Waivers can be intense. Sometimes you have to set up an entire flow chart of, okay, this is if if player X is taken, I'm going to drop player Y. Well, if player Z is added, I'm going to drop player X. And you have to 
be very calculated. Don't just rage drop a player uh, into the waiver wire and have that empty spot because you think it's easier. That actually can screw up your waiver plans. And then throughout the week, uh, heading into the weekend, if you have a player who is eligible for the IR, put them on the IR and just grab a backup running back. Don't don't be lazy. But this, I don't need him on my roster, Mike. Yes, and the percentage chance that it something happens to the starter and now the running back that you picked up has value. The, the, the chance that that happens is very, very low. But it's a free square. This is a this is a free scratcher that you found on the ground that still it still has all the the gunk on the front. And you just scratch it off. See if you want <laughs> all the gunk on the front. What, what do you? Call I don't know what stuff? you call that stuff on the front. It's got to have a name. The, the stuff that you the can silvery scratch the silvery scratch stuff. Yeah, silver scratchy stuff. Yeah, but this uh, this has led to gunk to to so much success. I like last year. If you had it, you know week seven, you you just threw. Wayne Gallman on your bench, just in case. Boom, all of a sudden he's averaging 15 points a game for about six weeks. This move, this maneuver saved my fantasy season last year. I saw in the middle of the season, <clears throat> or in the middle of the week, oh, Zeke is kind of banged up. Huh, I should probably just throw Tony Pollard on the back of my bench, just in case. Who knows? Tony Pollard, that one play where Tony Pollard ripped off the 50-yard touchdown, that literally saved my entire season. Uh, it got me to the championship. The next and because you were doing your cooking by the book. Yes, I was not being lazy. And then over that weekend as well, I had a, a player I could move to the IR. I threw Jeff Wilson yeah, onto my no, bench. I, I remember. I oh, hate yeah. you, by the way. That was a that was a huge win. And then all of a sudden, Jeff Wilson is the starter next week and has a monster fantasy output. Do not be lazy throughout the week. Stay plugged in. Stay connected to your team. Stay connected to the news. It will pay off. I tell you, I just learned something very valuable. That gunk is called UV ink. Uh, UV ink? UV ink. It's ink that dries under uh, ultraviolet light, um, and then you could scratch it off. So yeah. that's what I – thank you for your tip. You're, <laughs> <laughs> that, You're you learn, welcome. You learned something. Number five. All right, number five, I'm calling the heart wants what the heart wants. If you, this is for all the veteran fantasy football players out there. Um, if you've played a lot of fantasy, you've been a part of leagues for a long time, we got to acknowledge that we are human beings and we build narratives for players based on many inappropriate factors. And those narratives can compound over the years playing fantasy. Maybe it's something like what they've done for your team, which can go both ways, right? We reward them for good seasons in our minds. They're in the reward category. Mm -hmm. We punish them for bad ones in our minds. They, yeah. they didn't show up. I mean, Mike, I remember was it T.Y. Hilton where he dropped a pass yes. oh, yeah. four years ago and you yes. brought it up way too many times since then. And I don't know if you've ranked him above 100 since that moment. To be fair, that one single drop, Cost me the bye week, which cost me the uh, fantasy football championship. Yes, I did the math. I yes, I of went course down, you did. I went down that path of the pain. rabbit hole of pain. Yes, and look, it's all T. Y. Hilton's fault. This is a good tip for you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, and 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 maybe it's uh, what you expected them to do when they came into the league. Maybe it's what pundits or coaches said they're going to do. Maybe it's what you hoped they were going to do. It is so easy psychologically to believe positive storylines about players you like. Right, it's the whole like uh, confirmation bias, mm -hmm. or players we mentally plan to draft, or players that are on your dynasty team that you need them to succeed, so you believe they have to succeed. The best this tip is about taking a step back, use your brain, not your heart. That might mean forgiving and forgetting. Um, it might mean taking the rose-colored glasses off your face. And here are some examples, right? There are uh, some players in the beloved or hated category from last year. James Robinson was on some uh, the majority of like playoff and championship teams. James Robinson was one of the most commonly rostered players. He is beloved. You probably shouldn't lean on him the same way you did last year. Other players in that beloved category last year, Justin Herbert, Mike Davis. Like Mike Davis, I think, is getting a, a little bit of a what you did for me last year bump in ADP. Miles Gaskin, who we've brought up on the show. Same thing. 
He was a hero for a lot of teams. Adam Thielen is another one. Won people a lot of leagues, but the efficiency was kind of out there. And then on the other side of the coin, so those players you can't give an automatic bump in your rankings. On the other side of the coin, you know, Debo Samuel, one of the most annoying, injury-prone, impossible-to-depend-on players last year. Probably made you pull your hair out when you thought you'd get him back and play him. He's getting, you know, he's down in the rankings. Other players that were hated last year, Carson Wentz, A.J. Green, Michael Thomas. I mean, the, the stink around Michael Thomas is probably he not. Just, he just casually slips A.J. Green in there, Jason. Mm. <laughs> he was super hated. Yeah. And yeah. I think, I think honestly, look, don't my analysis of A.J. Green is reasonable. The starting wide receiver for a team this year. I don't think he's going to set your team on fire and win you the league. Oh, he'll, he'll set, set my fire. team on fire for sure. All yeah, right. <laughs> the point is, is there is fantasy value to be had there. I mean, he was he was putting up double digit games the weeks that Tyler Lockett wasn't last year. So just have a reasonable view of Michael Thomas. Like this year, he's ahead of schedule. But man, the stink around him, yeah. the perception. Yeah, yeah. Zach Ertz is even in that category. I'm sorry to say. So clean slate this year, more brain, less heart. That's my advice. I, I love the I'm sorry to say, because it's really true. You have to apologize for some right. of these players. Like you you you, you talk about AJ Green. Yeah, and I'm sorry I love, to I don't want to be this guy. Right. You don't want to you don't want to speak well of Zach Ertz, who's been, you know, a fart face on the field lately. <laughs> But God. but the reality is he's stuck in the third he's, grade. He's, You're darn right. Um, the rea I mean, <laughs> look at his hair. That's a Harvard insult if I've ever heard it. Uh, you know, he's on the field a lot. you got to apologize, but you also have to be realistic. I like it. That, that Use your brain. Use your brain. Number four. All right, number four. My, uh, my third and final tip here is the stack attack. Ooh. It is a strategy we have not talked a ton about on this show. Um, it is a strategy that is incredibly implemented in all DFS, mm -hmm. all best ball lineups. Stacking your roster pretty much is, I mean, it's what all the pros do. If you're gonna, if you're going to really want to take down any kind of money tournament, you have to stack. And explain and, what that yes, is, Jason. And stacking, yeah, <laughs> okay. stacking is taking your quarterback or quarterbacks in a, in a best ball and pairing them with the pass catchers from that lineup. It allows points to be maximized you get double touchdowns on a single play on a single week i was just gonna say this is something that i have anecdotally loved to do and enjoyed as a player but i'm super curious about the math and right and whether that whether that's just perception or reality well the math in in obviously money leagues best ball leagues dfs is outstandingly positive you pretty much need to be stacking but when it comes to redraft leagues, how does it fare in those leagues? Uh, we, we have an article already on the website with a lot of deep dive research, and it is more boom bust for sure. Uh, it is slightly less consistent, but the booms are enormous. Um, not only does it increase your ceiling, but it gives you something that you desperately need, which is in-roster correlation. Uh, no one correlates better to your quarterback than a pass catcher on his own team. It kind of makes sense, but, you know, obviously Ryan Tannehill's going to uh, correlate, uh, you know, with A.J. Brown um, way more than Justin Herbert will. And the reality is these rosters win championships. Look at last year's Stephon Diggs and Josh Allen. When you have a good pair, you can't beat them certain weeks. And I'm not interested in coming in in third in my fantasy league. I want to not win. Not again. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> um, look, if you ain't first, you're last. Yeah. Um, there was uh, another um, great study. Uh, Michael Leone from Establish the Run did an in-depth study last year. A late-round quarterback, a 10-round plus that was attached to their teammate, had a hit rate of 65%. That's a 10-point increase and outperformed ADP. This is a strategy that works for redraft. And I don't we, – we talked yesterday about, well, would you grab Mark Andrews and Lamar Jackson? I wouldn't because the opportunity cost there is enormous. I am spending a fourth and a fifth round pick on non-wide receivers, non-running backs. But pairing a great receiving option with a late-round quarterback is a phenomenal strategy. And you could do this not only in the draft, but in your in-season when you're looking at your streaming option. Grab the guy that, that – if you've got Darren Waller and Derek Carr's on the waivers and there's someone else in a good matchup, 
grab Derek Carr because the correlation in roster will really help you win. Here are my examples of guys I'm talking Oh, value stacks. Value stacks this year. Yeah. I am looking at Tannehill along with A.J. Brown or Julio. Mm -hmm. So he's one of my late-round guys. Obviously, Brady's the other late-round guy. So when Brady I'm, Godwin is my favorite value Brady stack. Brady Godwin is great. Uh, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown. You can stack him with any of those guys. Let's say you grab Terry McLaurin early in your draft, and you're a late-round quarterback drafter. Try, try Ryan Fitzpatrick yeah, on for size. Agreed. Um, every single game that Terry McLaurin – I mean, you're taking a shot when you draft Terry that he's going to be great. Well, whenever he's great, you're going to win a week if you stack him with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool. You can get a free big bin at yes, the end you of can. your draft. And I love Brandon Ayuk. We've, we've brought that up. Grab Trey Lance. I mean, stack these. If you've got these wide receivers, consider pairing them with the quarterbacks. I, I, it will help you win games, not just put up points, but actually win a week for you and uh, maybe bring home that, that trophy at the end of the year. All right, so stack attack. Very nice. Very nice. Number three. I'm going to jump ahead of Mike here because it kind of pairs well with yours, and then we'll rotate back to Mike's tip here. Mine is, and I'm going to need your help with this one, Jason, but it's mm -hmm. hold on to your butts. Okay, a lot of butts coming. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've seen more teams win championships using late-round quarterback strategy than those who have spent up on quarterbacks early. So this is built around... You know, you just talked about the stack attack and looking at late round value, stacking them with early round talent at the wide receiver position. And uh, look, when but, you but okay, here, here but we go. Uh, first, but early quarterbacks are safe. Wrong. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. Uh, no number one quarterback has repeated since 2012. We just talked about that in the quarterback ranking show. But listen to this mind blowing stat: since 2017, only three. Quarterbacks drafted as top five quarterbacks maintain their draft position or improved. Gross. The other 17 finished an average of six spots lower at the end of the season. And that doesn't even include like players that got injured like Rodgers or Dak. So, no, they're not safe. They actually lose their draft position. Whoa. But, <laughs> but Andy. The, the Vopo is shook. I'm a little shook. <laughs> But only the top quarterbacks put up elite numbers. <laughs> Wrong. On average, 40 quarterbacks per season put up a top 12 week. There are tons of options. Each year, new players emerge from the undrafted range. Justin Herbert did it last year. Winston did it in 2019. Goff did it in 2018. And those were players that ended up jumping up and being consistent, not counting for the week-to-week -week matchups. But... But what about all the guys that stink? He's a terrible NFL quarterback. Why would you draft him? Well, look, Derek Carr, I brought it up yesterday. He was the number 13 fantasy quarterback last year. Cam Newton was 16. We all know Cam Newton on the field wasn't as good as Cam Newton in fantasy. Carr and Newton combined for 15 weeks as top 12 quarterbacks. Blake Bortles famously oh, won yeah. fantasy championship. Yes, oh, he did. I remember did. that. <laughs> Oh, no, but but what about when the quarterback is playing poorly? I've got a message for you, Mr. Vopo. Yeah. Matchups, not momentum, rule the day. When you stream the quarterback position, you're looking for matchups. It doesn't matter if a player has a bad string of weeks. Look to the matchup. Find your quarterback value. 40 of them are going to give you a top week. Have I shut you up already? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Never. Never. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Number two. All right, we're calling this one the true value of a touch because you you hear us talking about we need running backs with receptions. And I just wanted to break down some of the, the math and the data behind that. Top 12 running backs who have finished in the – so they finished in the top 12 and they have finished there with under 45 targets oh this this these numbers are crazy in 2016 it was three the next year it was two the next year it was one the next year it was two and then last year we had a bit of an outlier uh where it jumped all the way up to four so four out of 12 of the top 12 did not have 45 targets that is correct and that was uh henry jt chubb and gibson who, who gibson was just under which means the last five years 
We've seen an average of 2.4 players finish in the top 12 at the running back position and have under 45 targets. And last year, all of the target monsters were hurt. Eckler, McCaffrey, Barkley pulled out of that top 12. So that number probably jumped up in part from their absence. Yeah, yeah. And Jay, Jonathan Taylor, Gibson, they don't, they don't crack that top 12 if those well, other guys are And healthy. as a whole, uh, looking at how everything was trending for just overall running back production, you know, it – it was crazy last year where we saw uh, a, a massive, massive dip in over uh, overall total reception yards at the running back position, especially when it was steadily holding around the 22,000 total receiving yards for running backs. It dropped all the way under 19,000 this past year. And yet we saw uh, rushing touchdowns skyrocket, over 30 ru total rushing downs compared to the last two years. And so just players need to have a target and let's look at the math of what is it worth last year when you're looking at the uh the top 50 running backs one attempt on average was worth about 0.45 points one reception was worth 1.2 points 0.45 to 1.2 on average yes in a, and that's in a half point ppr scoring format that's interesting so you need these guys to get the receptions. Yes, there you, you have the outliers. Like I said, 2.4 guys are going to jump into the top 12, and this year that'll probably be Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry and and Nick Chubb. Even he didn't. Nick Chubb didn't hit the mark last year, but two years ago, Nick Chubb was over that mark. Like he he's not an elite level volume uh, pass catcher, but they've used him like that before, and he and he has some chops. So they, it can happen, but it's a bad bet. Yes. So that's why we've been talking about. J.K. Dobbins, the talent is incredible. And sure, maybe J.K. Dobbins has an outlier rushing touchdown uh, season. But we know that Baltimore, uh, Lamar Jackson, he doesn't check it down at, at a high rate to his running backs. So it's going to be very tough for him to get into that top 12. Josh Jacobs, he was in the top 12 last year. He was just at that 45 target mark. But does that dip because of the addition of Kenyon Drake? So when you're looking at these running backs, saying, I'm drafting this player because I see a way that he jumps into the top 12, make sure that you are projecting at least 45 targets for that running back. Ah, it's valuable to have the yeah. ball thrown your way. Yeah, in, in today's both NFL and in today's fantasy, where it's all half PPR and full PPR, you have to have your running back catching the, the ball, unless his name is Derrick Henry. All right, without further ado, one tip left. Number one. Never give up, never surrender. That's right. Every single That's right, year, Andy. That's right, Andy. <laughs> every single year we hear over and over and over. It's, it's it's one of my absolute favorite pieces of feedback. We hear, oh, we were I was 0-4, and then I found your podcast, went on to win the championship. I was one and five. But the the majority of people out there they get to if you get off to a bad start, you know, you lose Christian McCaffrey early in the year and now you're struggling and you next thing you know, you're you're two and four, one and four. You're you're off to a strong uh, off to a bad start. It's very, very common to just kind of throw in the towel to just yeah. kind of give up. And 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 I, I say and, and Tim Allen says, no, never give up. Never surrender. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. <laughs> Don't give up and never surrender. But here's why it's a special trick this year, because obviously it's just good advice. But one thing that I think people aren't going to be thinking about is the fact that there is an extra game this season. Well, however you feel getting off to a bad start in years past is exactly how you're going to feel this year, exactly how your league mates are going to feel this year. But this year you have one extra week mm -hmm. before your fantasy playoffs start. So when we've had people say, oh, I was 0-5, and then I went and I made the championship, this year we're going to have people saying I was 0-6, and I took home the trophy. This year, more than any other year, uh, if you commit to just pushing through a bad start, if a bad start happens, you will be fine. Make the right waiver wire moves. Make the right start sit. Stick with the show through the year, and, and you're going to make the playoffs. You're going to have a chance at winning the trophy. Well, and, and you think about it, other people aren't going to follow that advice. Exactly. Other people are going to, to resign themselves. They're mentally weak. Or at, we've seen – what's crazy, too, is we've seen – maybe I'll, I'll, I'll jam this advice in here, too. 
we've seen people in in like dynasty formats like just sell so soon too early like it's like two weeks go bad and it's like we're rebuilding and then guess what three or four teams are out of contention for the playoffs and at suddenly that point. they're trying to buy again <laughs> yeah and then, it, and then yeah they win a game on accident yeah. and they're trying to buy so there's an aspect of patience right there's an aspect of not overreacting there's an aspect of like i've done all this legwork for the last four months preparing for my draft or preparing for the season, maybe just breathe. And then the extra game gives you one more week of breathing. And then you could take advantage of those league mates that designed, decided to tilt. And the, the last thing I'll throw in there, I we I get it. it it's hard. When you start 0-4 and yeah, 0 and 0 it sucks. Yes, it feels really bad. The One loss is just, you feel that. Like, all week. And so I totally understand that that is – the natural, uh, the, the the human nature of starting own four and own five, you you just well, it's done. So it's, we're not saying that this tip is easy. We're just saying stick with it, be strong, hold on because That's you right. can turn it around. That's right. We're just saying when you say I'm gonna give up, uh -huh. no, never give up, <laughs> never surrender, no. All right, that'll do it for our top ten tips and tricks show. Another one in the books. Mock draft show tomorrow. My guys on Friday. Oh, it's brother. Go time right now. Let's go get those Foot Clan titles, people. Talk to you soon. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.